Alright guys, um, so I've put the photo detector in place um, and I just wanted to show you I've taken a, a lot of sets of data about 10 or so um, for you to look at from the photo detector. So we're looking at the transmission through the optical cavity this is our drive signal um, and at the moment I haven't connected the photo detector yet so I just need to connect the Connect the piezo. And now plug in the detector. And we're on ten volts, which is way too much. All right, there we go. So this is our transmission in blue, which is a way of monitoring whether our cavity is resonant or not. Okay, so we sweep the cavity length and we're sweeping, we're changing the, the resonant frequency as we change the length and we get these um, transmission peaks which correspond to um, resonances of different modes. So we can see that you know one of them is much stronger than the other. Um, I think at the moment I haven't got it quite set up optimally so we can pick up several free spectral ranges which is like where it repeats. Um, but yeah you know that's that's essentially it. I've taken a lot of this data for you. I've zoomed in you know to just so I can get one sweep and I'm going to use the going up sweep because the piezos have some hysteresis they don't behave the displacement curve is not a linear up and down the way it goes up is different to how it comes down as opposed to you know a plot on the displacement versus applied voltage graph it sort of goes up you apply the voltage and the position which is the vertical axis increases but then it, uh, on the way back it kind of does a loop over the top so we're only going to use the increasing sweep uh, because that one's the one that's mostly linear um, yeah so that's that's that driving the driving the cavity length and recording transmission data now you can see that if I change the frequency of the drive uh, my transmission peaks change their height because generally when the frequency is low uh, the cavity has more time to stay on resonance and there can be, especially because we've got ground vibrations here, there can be more opportunity for um, the cavity to stay on resonance for a longer period of time so you get to, sometimes you get very large peaks um, whereas if you drive really fast you'll get generally quite small but consistent peaks and they should ideally give you the same finesse value because the finesse is a measure of the peak intensity but also the um, width that that peak intensity occurred over um, so you know you've got different data sets and you can have a look at the effects of that obviously when you're on low frequency you get a lot of fluctuation in the peak which makes it difficult um, to get a consistent measure um, so I would use all, all of them. I would be taking averages of all the finesse values for each peak. And uh, yeah, so I've saved all the data as CSV files, so you've got them in Excel. And that's it. Uh, I hope you know it's been an enjoyable optical cavity lab experience, and that you know things are making sense, and you have an idea about optics and you know how to align optical cavities. If you get into any kind of optics field, this is a really important skill. Okay, uh, great, um, see, you, see you in Zoom.